All right, what's up guys? This is Lucas here. So today I have uh, quite an interesting topic to discuss and kind of explain. Uh, it's the number of configurations of uh, n by n Rubik's cubes. So I'm sure you've heard the number 43 quintillion and uh, that refers to the number of uh, configurations of a standard Rubik's cube. So I'll be walking you through like how to figure that out and then kind of uh, expanding that to uh, higher order um, puzzles and even the two by two. So yeah, let, let's just get started. So 43 quintillion is quite large. Um, and kind of where that originates from is uh, the orientation and permutation of each individual piece. So basically, you've got, uh, on the 3x3, three three, you've got corners and edges. Um, so you got to account for each possible orientation and permutation. Um, and another thing is you cannot overcount. So let's say you have a twisted corner like this. That's not a possible position, uh, no matter which turn you do. So you have to, like I said, account for that. So let's get started. On the 3x3, three three, uh, if we break this down, so orientation, um, what's nice about the 3x3 three three is you have fixed center pieces, so you don't have to account for any rotations. Um, so let's start off with corners. So corners can be oriented three different ways, uh, solved, and then like this or like that. So for each one, you've got three different um, orientations. And, but one thing you need to note is the orientation of the last corner solved solely relies on the orientation of the second to last. So basically, for example, uh, let's say you have two different twisted corners. Um, let's say this one is fixed. So that means that the only, there's only one possible position for the other corner. This one work and this one work. There's only one. So basically you have one option. So that leaves us with three to the seventh for the seven corners minus one. So basically eight minus one right there. And then edges, same principle. Uh, you've got 12 of them, um, and the last one is based on, or must be determined by the second to last. So you've got 2 to the 11th. But here's the thing. Uh, let's say you have a situation where these two pieces are swapped. So basically from any, any way you can assemble the cube, the corners can be solved, um, but the... Let's just say that you're solving the corners. That does not mean that the edges can be solved, though, because let's say you have two adjacent or two opposite. Uh, that's not a possible configuration. So basically, after you solve all the corners, you can always get the edges down to one cycle. Um, and that's like a 50-50 chance that it's uh, swapped or not. So that means you're dividing uh, this by two. So permutation is pretty uh, simple. Um, basically, uh, since you have fixed centers, the pieces can take any position. Um, so you've got eight corners. And let's say you start with uh, this one. It can take any of the eight positions. And then this could take any of the remaining seven. So if you're familiar with factorial, um, the corners would be a factorial and then edges same thing times 12 factorial and here you go if you can if it'll focus got 43 quintillion so that's basically uh the uh three by threes let's see uh,
that's the uh, 43 quintillion. Uh, that's how it's derived. Okay. Um, and things get a little bit more interesting as you move on to uh, two by two. Um, so there aren't edges, which is nice. So basically all you have to consider is corner uh, permutation and orientation. Go ahead and write that down. Um, three to the seven times eight factorial. Um, but one thing you need to account for is rotational um, symmetry. So basically, let's say you have this configuration. Um, that really should be the same as doing, like, say, an X prime. Um, but when you do uh, this number, that does not account for it currently. You just need to find the number of ways a certain position can like be rotated. So if you think about it this way, for each face you have four options. So that leaves us with four times six, which is uh, 24. So if you divide by 24, that results in the number. All right, and then this one's significantly smaller right there. Three six seven four one six zero. That's the two by two. So the next big challenge is, or not really challenge, just big stepping stone is the four by four, because now you have centers, and uh, same thing as the two by two. They're not really fixed, so you gotta account for some rotations in there. Okay, so. Basically, the corners are going to be the exact same. That's true for every n by n, every n by n puzzle. So if you go ahead and write down 3 to the 7 times 8 factorial, um, that's, that's the corners. Okay, and then centers. Um, so basically, you've got 24 of them, 4 on 6 sides. Um, so... Just like for edges and corners, uh, you just do that number factorial to figure that out. But here's the catch. Um, each of these pieces are the same. So basically like swapping these two or swapping these two or these two, that's the same position um, technically based on the colors. Uh, so you need to account for that by dividing by four factorial, because let's say this piece can go in any of the four, this can go in any of the three remaining. Uh, so you just divide by four factorial. Okay, and that's that's important, because as you move up in bigger cubes, um, for each 24 factorial, you pretty much divide by uh, four factorial as well. Oh, and also, um, Another thing is that that's four factorial for each side. So you got to add us to the six right there. So if you just rewrite that, that's 24 to the six. I uh, forgot that. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry if that was a bit fast, but okay. So next, the edges. These are quite easy because any way you configure the edges on a four by four, it's solvable. Uh, that's just a property of the puzzle. So basically, you have 24 positions, so 24 factorial. And then, again, uh, rotational symmetry, since the centers are not fixed, you have to divide everything by 24. And then that leaves, let's see, 7.4 times 10 to the 45th. So, um, yeah, the numbers are getting extremely large. Uh, okay, so that's, that's the, we'll be using all of these principles pretty much um, as you continue expanding. So I've got a 5x5 five five here. So right here. Okay, so... This is basically a combination of the 3x3 three three and 4x4. Four four. Um, so 
corners are quite simple. Uh, as like I said, same thing every time. Three to the seventh times eight factorial. Okay, and then all right, let's take this case by case. So if you do centers first, so you've got two. Okay, let's note that there are fixed centers here, so we can ignore uh, rotational symmetry. Um, so that leaves us with two types of center pieces. You've got uh, these right here, got four of those, and then these like kind of corner pieces. So it's like a um, each of these work the exact same as um, the center pieces on the four by four. So we're just gonna um, pretty much be doing or factoring that in twice. Okay, so let's take these pieces first. So you've got four of them and four of them on each side. So that leaves us with 24 factorial. Okay, and then you account for uh, the equality of the color pretty much uh, since there's only one. Uh, by dividing by 24 to the 6. Okay. And then the same thing for these corners out here. So you do 24 factorial divided by 24 to the 6. All right. And then um, now on the edges. Okay. So it's important to note that this functions like a uh, three by three edge and then these function like four by four wings so if we just combine uh, those yeah you'll get the number so let's see so for these we've got 12 of them so times 12 factorial okay and then you divide by uh, two to the tenth or you multiply by two to the tenth sorry uh, like up here Okay, and then you've got these um, So you Multiply by 24 factorial and That's pretty much it. Uh, you don't have to divide by the rotational since they're fixed centers, so that should leave a pretty massive number <laughs> All right 2.83 times 10 to the 74th. And that's pretty much all I'm going to show for now. Because uh, this video is already crazy long. Uh, so, yeah. So all you have to do is really combine uh, principles. Alright, so if we generalize um, and combine the principles from the 3x3 and 4x4, like, let's take an n by n puzzle. Um, uh, we can kind of figure out what's going on. So, the corners will always be the same. Uh, 3 to the 7th times 8 factorial. Okay. And then, all right, let's... And then thinking about centers, like, let's break this down into cases. So, the uh, centers and then the edges as well. So, for centers... Um, as you move up, uh, the different kinds of centerpieces are uh, subject to change. So basically, I think, um, okay, so like for each centerpiece, you've got, for each type, uh, you have um, 24 factorial, like the positions. And then, of course, since they're identical, you have to account for... Um, the 4 factorial, and then 1 for each side, so 24 to the 6th, okay? And then uh, the number of centerpieces, different types of centerpieces, like in this case, 5 by 5, you've got the this one and then this one. Uh, that is, um, I think it's... The floor of n minus 2 over 2, and then squared. So for 5 by 5, that would be 5 minus 2 over 2, so 3 halves squared. 
that four is out to two, and that's correct. Um, so that accounts for the different types of centerpieces. And then if you go to um, wing edges, obviously there aren't any on um, like a three by three, um, but anything higher than that, you'll have wing edges. So um, basically that each one has 24 possible positions. So that is 24 factorial to the again, n minus 2 over 2, the 4. Okay, so like 5 by 5, 5 minus 2 divided by 2 for that 1. Uh, and you, you do indeed have just one pair or one type. Okay, and then the last type of edge is, of course, the 3x3 three three type 1, like the center wing, and that's only present on odd layer cubes. And um, that's from the 3x3 three three part where it's um, 2 to the 10th times um, 12 factorial. So 2 to the 10th times 12 factorial. And then, of course, that's n mod 2. And then if you bring it down, okay. Um, and then lastly, we need to account for rotational symmetry, um, like I was talking about with the 2x2. Two two. Um, so that's only present for even layer cubes. So basically, uh, you divide by 24, right? Because uh, four different ways to for each position, like for each side. Um, should make divided by 24. And then... That'll be to the, um, I think, uh, yeah, n plus 1 mod 2. Because let's say 2 by 2, uh, 2 plus 1 mod 2 is 1. So yeah, divided by 24. Okay, and then that's, this is the golden equation pretty much. Um, you can calculate any n by n. So if you take 6 by 6, You'd have this, of course, and then uh, this to the fourth, and then this squared, and then um, you would not have this since there's not a center wing, and then, of course, rotational symmetry, so divided by 24. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. It's quite simple after you figure out the pattern, and I think it's very important to understand how it works uh, so you can know what can and can't happen on a cube. Uh, and it's also pretty cool to think about. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, very big numbers, but um, I don't know. I like it and hope you did too. So yeah, that's about it. So thank you guys for watching.